to the First Baptist Church of Washington Hills, the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, January 29th, 2023. We are in the winter quarter, God's great blessing, and we begin Unit 3, Blessing of Grace in Christ. And our lesson for today is Blessing of Belonging in Christ, which is coming from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 14th through the 31st verse. And our golden text read, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. 1 Corinthians 12, chapter and 27, verse. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and almighty God, here again we call upon your holy and your righteous name. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our heart, realizing that we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for life as well with us as it is. We thank you for your many blessings that you have already bestowed down upon us, Father. Now, Heavenly Master, we call upon you to just to say thank you for all what you have done for us, for you have brought us from a mighty long way. Now, Heavenly Master, we pray for the sick all over the land. We ask that you would comfort families who have lost a loved one, their heads are bowed down in sorrow. We pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask you to continue to lead and guide us. Open our hearts and our minds that we might be receptive to your holy word. And we thank you and we give you all the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our devotion reading is coming out of the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, the 3rd through the 8th verse. Beginning with number 3. For I say, through the grace, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members should have, have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of one of another. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether well, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. A ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or uh, he that teaches on teaching. In the last verse, number eight, and he that exhort on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do with simplicity. He that rules with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Our lesson is blessing of belonging in Christ. Now, lesson outline number one is the worth of the member from 1 Corinthians 12, chapter the 14 through the 20th verse. And the second outline is the harmony of the members, 1 Corinthians 12 and the 21st through the 26th verse. And the third outline is the gifts of the members, 1 Corinthians 12, the 27 through the 31st verse. This first lesson in the third unit, Blessing of Grace in Christ in the Winter Quarter, God's Great Blessings, touches on the blessing of grace. Our sovereign God favor us, which give us much hope when we face the trials of life. Being part of the body of Christ give us very tangible fellowship with God through other believers. You can fellowship with and be careful about members of your church whenever you are experiencing troubles. We are connected with every other believer and must cooperate so that the body of Christ function effectively. Paul, he's continuing his teaching to the Corinthian church in regards to spiritual guilt and especially their affection for the guilt of tongues. They apparently were so focused on that one spiritual gift, whereas they were neglecting other gifts. Paul stresses that edification was the primary goal. Therefore, they needed to show restraint and let all the members fulfill their roles. Every believer in Christ has been gifted to serve in the body of Christ. And our first outline is the worth of the member, which is the 14 through the 20th verses. Number 14, for the body is not one member, but many. Paul gives 
an illustration of the church by comparing the Lord's spiritual body to a physical body. The body has many members that must work together in order to function properly. Whereas the church has many diverse members who serve a variety of functions. There is great diversity in the body of Jesus Christ, both in appearance and function. However, each member has a common root and a common goal in which God wants us to relate. Number 15, if the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? The implication is, just as the various members are needed in the body, all of the spiritual gifts was needed for the functioning of the church. It will be absurd for the foot to feel unimportant or not part of the body because it is not a hand and cannot do the work of a hand. It is not up to the foot to make that decision because the foot has a purpose, one that the hand is not able to correctly fulfill. Diversity does not disqualify one from the body. Then number 16, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Paul repeats the pattern of the previous verse by saying, if the ear says, because I am not the eye, then I am not part of the body. Because it is not the eye, the ear decided it is no longer a part of the body anymore. However, it is still part of the body. It might stop functioning, which would be bad for the rest of the body. But however, the ear has a function that the eye cannot perform. In 17, if the whole body was an eye, where was the hearing? If the whole was hearing, where was the smelling? Not only is diversity in the body of Jesus Christ acceptable, but it is essential. No part of the body is unneeded, whereas each part contributes something to the functioning of the body. The body cannot work properly if all was eyes because no hearing would exist. If the body only consisted of hearing, then where is the smelling? The body must have different parts or it would not work together effectively as a body. Those in Christ have been given their own unique spiritual gift as well as specific functions to do in the body of Christ. Whereas these function require their specific gifts. When we all cooperate, the body can accomplish things no individual can achieve. Then number 18. But, had, but now has God set the members, every one of them in the body has it has pleased him. Why is the hand a hand and the foot a foot? Well, I'm glad you asked that. It pleased God, the designer, to make it so. Therefore, the hand cannot take any pride in being a hand, nor do the foot need to take shame in being a foot. Each serve the pleasure of the designer, whereas we can see the wisdom of the designer, whereas everybody have something, but nobody has everything. God has placed each body part in the best place on the body to do his work, giving each part the exact job for which it was designed, and these parts are meant to work in harmony. The human body is neither an accident nor an environment, but an accomplishment, whereas we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Then number 19, and if they was all one member, where was the body? It is impossible to think of a body with only one member. In the church, if every member decided to do the same thing, the body would cease to exist. If all had the same gift, 
then it would not be a functioning body. We should be grateful for whatever gift God has given us and joyfully use it for his glory and for building up others. To be envious of someone else's gift is sin and it is rebellion against God's perfect plan for our life. And then the last verse in this outline, number 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. Has the human body function as a healthy body when each member performs according to his purpose, so it is with the church. As God has ordained, there are many members, yet one body. These are obvious to us in relating to the human body, and they should be obvious to us relating with our service in the church as it relates to the gift we have been given. The heart, lung, liver, arm, legs, and all the rest contribute to the well-being of the body. Whereas the spiritual gift of believers contribute to the well-being of the church. Churches that accomplish their purpose has many and various peoples serving different functions assigned to them through the gift of the spirit while still being just one church. Not every spiritual gift is equally glamorous in the eyes of the world and not every task in the church is equally prestigious in the eyes of the world. But churches need people to fulfill those other roles just as much as the body needs all those members to serve their purpose. Whereas they are all part of the same spirit and need to work together for that reason. And that in our first outline, the worth of the member. And our second outline is the harmony of the member, which is the 21st through the 26th verse. 21. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor against the head to the feet. I have no need of you. The members of a healthy body do not hurt one another or ignore the needs of one another. Some Christians might feel that they don't need the service provided by other Christian gifts, whereas they mistakenly believe that their gift is more important while other gifts are unimportant. This is like an eye saying to the hand or the head saying to the feet that I have no need of you. Any Christian that thinks such a thing of a brother or sister in Christ, that their God-given role is unimportant or irrelevant does not understand how the body of Christ works. And number 22, nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Some members of the body might seem to be weaker than others. However, while the eye might seem to me be more important, but it is not more necessary or important than other parts of the body. It is easy to think of the more seen and heard members of the body as more important. However, in our physical body, the heart and the lungs are hidden, but they perform a vital function. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker, less exciting and less seen in public, these are the parts that you cannot live without. Then number 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundance honor, and our uncommonly parts have more abundance commonness. We sometimes think much more highly about certain parts of the body when in fact all are important and some unseen parts far more if necessary. The stomach and the digestive system plays a huge role in the body health after being supplied with the proper nutrient from the hands and the mouth. The parts of our body normally covered by clothes are often considered less honorable, but we give them great honor by clothing them so carefully. In the body of Christ, members must supply spiritual nutrients 
to those who need them to grow and stay spiritual healthy. For that is what strengthens the whole body. What the more an honor member do is important. However, it cannot be done without the contribution of those other members. The least honor function of the church becomes the most honor when God's people work together to protect and care for those who need it most. Then number 24, for our commonly parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundance honor to that part which lacks. Not every part of the human body requires protection and modesty. Those parts of the body that are presentable don't need extra attention, but God has combined all the different members of the body into an organic structure. Whereas God has given us this instinct to appreciate all the members. Beyond the easily seen has pastors and teachers, other gifted people, feel roles that are virtually invisible to the rest of the church body. God has created the body and that he has given more abundant honor to the least commonest poet. Number 25 that there shall be no children in the body, but that the members shall have the same care one for another. Seen from God's perspective, there is never any reason for children or division in the body. A very gifted person may struggle with pride, however, that shall not be division, whereas the pride of the honorable member is checked, as well as the shame of the less honorable members. Division is avoided when each part of the body is honoring the other parts of the body. There will be no division when all believers are caring for and uplifting one another. Then our last person is outline number 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. When one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or when one member is honored, then all the members rejoice with it. What affect one member affect all. Therefore, God wants us to support one another. The care for one another means to have a heart toward and sympathy with our fellow members. When one of the members of our body hurt, we all hurt. And cannot do what we need to do as well as we should. According to God's design, the church never functions more correctly than when Christians do the same thing for each other. When we are willing to be moved by the experiences of our brothers and sisters in Christ, to feel the pain and joy of others, to take on the role that we have been given by God, we move closer and closer to being that single Christ-like organism has God intended for us to be. Anything that hurts another Christian should cause us sorrow also. Likewise, if we see another Christian honor, we should not feel jealous, but we should rejoice with him. And that in our second outline, the harmony of the members, and our last outline is the gifts of the members, the 27th through the 31st verses. Number 27, but now ye are the body of Christ and member in particular. Paul reminds the Corinthians that they are the body of Christ, whereas each one is an individual, a member of this great society, and as such should fulfill their function without any feeling of pride, independence, envy, or worthlessness, without civil and manifesting genuine care for each other. When one person is jealous of the gifts of another, or when one person thinks that gift is more important than another person's gift, they are building dividing walls between them and other members in the body of Christ. We should set aside any discontent about the role God has given us in the church and realize that we need 
other members of the body of Christ, then we have the opportunity to thrive together, becoming what God intends for the church to be. In number 28, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, help, government, diversity of tongues. God has supplied his church with gifted people, and by working together, we can accomplish his plan to evangelize the world. Paul lists several positions which plays a part in bringing harmony. The apostle had a unique apostle authority and our special ambassadors of the church commissioned by the Lord as his messenger. The prophets are those with the gift of prophecy called to speak to the church in the world with a special blessing and power. Teachers are those who take the word of God which has been revealed and explain it to the people in an understandable way. Workers of miracles are those used of God to do miracles done on the Holy Spirit initiative and not the initiative of the individual. Gifts of healing has to do with the instantaneous cure of bodily diseases. Helps are those who assist others in doing the work of the Lord. They has been entrusted with the material affairs of the church. Government or administration are those who have the godly, spiritual care of the local church. Paul lists the gifts of tongue last, probably because the Corinthians thought of it first and above all. In number 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. Paul asserts that not every member has each of the various gifts. All spiritual gifts are needed and shall be honored in the church. Paul asks a series of rhetorical questions that demands the answer no. Is everyone in the church an apostle or a prophet or a teacher or workers of miracles? Not everyone is an apostle, a prophet, or teacher, and certainly only those given the gift of the ability to work miracles by the Holy Spirit can perform miracles. And number 30, having all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Paul continued asking, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? The obvious answer is no. Whereas all spiritual gifts are needed and all those diverse members have an important role to fulfill in the health and success of the church. Just as the gift of apostles, prophets, teachers, workers of miracle or healing is not for every believer, therefore the gift of tongues is not for every believer either. Any suggestion to express or imply that everyone should have the gift of tongue is contrary to the word of God and is foreign to the whole concept of the body with its many different functions, with many different members, each with their own function. And then our last verse, number 31, but covenant earnestly the best gift, and yet show out to you a more excellent way. Has important, has spiritual gift all, that was something far more important than the Corinthians needed to learn about and utilize. Paul closed the chapter by pointing them to a better way, the more excellent way, and which is the way of love, which he will explain in greater detail in chapter 13. The great love chapter is right in the middle of his commentary on gifts. For diverse people to work in unity, we must employ love the most excellent way. The gifts we receive from the Holy Spirit are merely ways we can express 
and receive love from God and love to one another. It is good and proper for us to desire gifts and to ask for them. However, it is the Holy Spirit that gives the gifts in submission to the plan of God. We should desire spiritual gifts, but if our desire for them causes us to sin, then those gifts have become ours in our life. We do not know why God gives one person a gift over another, but we know that God is trustworthy. Our participation in the body of Christ is that every person is blessed. Whatever gift we have been given, the Lord wants us to use them diligently and in humility, not calling attention to ourselves, but doing all for the glory of Christ. Amen. And this is our lesson for today. And on next Sunday, our lesson would be the February 5th. Our lesson would be blessing or miss. Trial, which is coming from James, the first chapter, the 1 through the 8th verse, and then the 12th through the 18th verses. And our devotion reads coming from 1 Peter, the third chapter, the 13th through the 18th verses. Our Sunday school virtual telecast is on at 8 o'clock a.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook and YouTube page. And our sanctuary Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Our sanctuary Sunday morning worship is on at 10.30 a.m. Uh, live on Facebook on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. And our Wednesday night Bible study is live on Facebook at 6 o'clock p.m. on First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Both broadcasts are available later on YouTube on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill channel. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and almighty God, here's once again that we call on your holy name, Father. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our hearts, for we know that we have so much to be thankful for. We continue to pray for the sick all over the land. We ask that for comfort for families who have lost a loved one that his are bowing down in sorrow. We pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin. We ask that you would touch them before it ever lasts and too late. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask that you to strengthen us where we might be weak. Build us up where we are torn down and prop us on every leaning side. Give us more determination to run this race that is set before us. For we realize we're on the cheese of journey and we cannot make it by ourselves. We need you each and every day. We need you every step of the way. Well, Heavenly Master, we ask you to continue to keep us in your love and care. Continue to lead and guide us in a way be pleasing in your sight. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. We want to thank you once again for tuning in to our Sunday school lesson. And we want to beat you to have a good rest of the day. And until we meet again on next Sunday, we beat you to have a good rest of the, the week. May the Lord continue to bless you and to keep you in his love and care. Amen.